Good evening, dear viewers. You're watching RTD's English News Edition. Here are our headlines. The head of state's upcoming tour in the regions beginning tomorrow. In South Sudan, Riek Mashar becomes prime minister for the third time. In the international news, 27 leave without agreement on the future of EU budget. Thank you for joining us in our newsroom. The President of the Republic, His Excellency Smarlo Merghele, will be touring the various regions of the interior of the country in February and March. These presidential tours are not precedent setting. They constitute a new session of the requirement of proximity and contact uh, that since his accession to the Supreme Magistery, uh, President Gele has never ceased to impose to his compatriots the ultimate goal uh, of these trips is for the head of state to get a first-hand look at the situation of the people in our interior regions in order uh, to have all the practical and the judicious experience that he needs to adopt possible and refocusing policies. Uh, these prudential tours are particularly an excellent opportunity to carry out uh, a critical assessment of major reforms, notably decentralization and the regional development uh, polls undertaken for the uh, benefit of our regions of the interior. As a clear sign of their frank and transparent nature, uh, these tours will take uh, the form of direct exchanges outside any intermediate uh, hierarchy between our populations in the regions of the interior and the main political leader of our country. And concerning this upcoming tour of the head of state, during his presidency, the head of state, Smilo Mergele, has constantly listened to his compatriots in the capital and the most remote regions. For more details, here is an editorial reportage. <laughs> During his presidency, the head of state, Ismail Omar Gili, even though he resides in the capital, remains constantly attentive to the population of the region. It's not a secret that the head of state, in addition to his official travels, take advantage of his weekend to make an announced visit to the rural areas. More one nomad. More than one nomad is surprised to meet the president and to be able to talk to him and talk about their daily life. However, the president never missed an opportunity for more extensive and official talks and meetings with his compatriots during his regular regional tours, but also during all his trip for inauguration and other occasions. Whether in Dekhil or Al Sabih, Tejora or Obakh, Passing through the art region, the President of the Republic, accompanied by his government, crisscrossed the country regularly to deal in deep with the specific problem of each region and each locality. These meetings, most often under a tree, remain the highlights of every visit or trip of the head of state. Indeed, these meetings are the subject of minutes written by the executive from each ministerial department in the presence of member of the government. There are the solemn sessions to which all the notables and customary chiefs of the localities making up each region are invited or each representative takes the floor to talk about the general situations in his or her locality. The President of the Republic, who takes note of the grievance of these notables, gives his replies to the various subjects raised, a frank dialogue which makes it possible to deal in deep uh, with the various aspects of life in rural areas and which enables the various departments to draw up an uh, appropriate program to deal with all aspects of social life in the most remote localities. These interviews also cover women and youth and discuss issues specific to these two social categories of the populations. The objective of this visit is, as we have previously indicated, not only to listen to the population, but also to have a visual pictures with a direct representative 
of the civil populations. Of course, officials such as local elected officials and parliamentarians of the region visited are not left out as well and take an active part in this interactive exchange between the populations and the government. Finally, in addition to the dialogue with the populations, the head of state takes the opportunity to launch or inspect infrastructure projects in progress or to come. Sadly, in the region, after the last rainfall, the landscape has literally changed. The grain landscape now gives way to greenery as far as the eye can see. And this is to the delight of the farmers in our regions. After all, these farmers and their herds, which were affected by a severe drought, are now being cared for by nature as pastures and water are once again plentiful. It is the return to the period of affluence for both animals and people, the herders who have been bled dry by the constant purchase of fodder and other livestock feed are beginning to smile again. But during this period of Linka, the agro-pastoralists who sell their dairy products along the corridor of National Road 1 were supported, as they say, by a man whose first concern was to listen to these populations and who cared about their fate, a mother who makes her living from the selling of milk, has shared with us her impression, saying that thanks to the rain, milk is plentiful and, price, and prices have gone down. The period during the drought was very difficult, so thanks to God, we had the constant support of the President of the Republic, who bought all our products, milk sold along the corridor by sending a collection vehicle every day. She said, this milk was offered to the hospitals and the orphanage and we were very well paid. This allowed us, she said, to buy drilling during that time to feed our livestock. She took advantage of this occasion and thanked the head of state for this long period of daily assistance and support. Now the animals no longer need drilling, she said. The pasture is in a green and the milk is abundant and we will lower the price. We have a strong customer base, she concluded. In Dikhil, at the present, in addition to the corridor and the commercial sector, the Dikhil region also has an industry uh, which is beginning to make its mark on the economic landscape of the region, in particular in water and footwear industries, to name but a few. For more details, let's watch this video. Car Food and Beverage Industries Packaging Unit is located in Dikhil, in the south of the country. The company produced two flagship brands, Palmare and Ukar. The mineral water is extracted more than 100 meters underground in the heart of a thousand-year oasis of Sheikh Mandiaru in Dikhil. We start from a pre-formed bottle. We heat the pure foam at 10 degrees. We blow into a mold. The material freezes firmly and we obtain the shape of the bottle. The letter is taken to the filling machine on sterile air conveyors. From there, quickly, the bottle passes to another machine which will fill and cork them in line. Once out of the filling and corking machine, we go directly to the laborer to give it an identity and a date. Once the label is finished, we go to the shrink wrapping machine, which is the place where we're going to batch the water from six bottles. The last step in this process is palletizing, which consists of packaging the bottles in cartoons. In fact, it is the largest employer in the region. This factory employs about 28 young people, all natives of the region. Among them are Burwaku Abdi Adan and Nabil Muhammad Abdullahi. We are very happy to have found work in our area, close to home. We are really, really happy because we can both take care of our house and also work. Thank God this factory has offered us work and it is an opportunity we are taking advantage of. From brewing to wrapping, the bottling process of Okar and Palamari natural miller water is perfected at the cutting edge of technology. It filters, purifies and balances the water. This company has developed equipment and a computer program that ensures the stability of the natural millers in the water and tests, produces pure, 100% natural water of a very high and consistent quality. The entire production chain of the bottled water is consistently monitored to ensure that the purity of the water remains intact for the consumer. The plant processes and packages about 23,760 bottles of mineral water every day, one of the most popular mineral waters in Djibouti. This plant is not the only one here. Iliko, a factory for the manufacture of shoes, leather goods, clothing, and accessories of all kinds, is located in the town of Mulud, 10 kilometers from the main town. This young leather goods production company is the first of its kind in our country to be able to take over the production of shoes of all types in industrial quantities. It offers different models, from murky senses to sneakers with African prints, moles, boots, rangers, sandals, and children's shoes, models that cost between 
During the festivities commemorating the 40th anniversary of the creation of the Mulud locality, the President of the Republic, Ismail Umar Gedli, called on the Djiburian Armed Forces to procure ranger personnel from the Djiburian company Eleko. Responding to the appeal launched by the President of the Republic, the High Command of the Djibouti Coast Guard has taken the initiative to procure ranger shoes from national production by the Djibouti company Eleko. Once our production has stabilized, we will need more labor. We are going to recruit young people and we are training a native of the region for this purpose. This group of young people is formed by Umar, as you may have met him, and we are also waiting for the other two trainers to come. Once trained, the staff will increase. The Dakhir region brings a visible change in the socio-economic development of the country. Commenting on the industrial sector of Dikhil region. Now moving on to the Dikhil region remains one of the agriculture regions of the country. With the support of the Ministry of Agriculture, several areas are currently cultivated by the Dikhil population. The main gardens are located in Asela, Hanle, Mulut, among others. The most important remains the agro-pastoral farm located at the entrance of the city and exploited for nearly 20 years by Jama Gedi, who built his reputation around this primary sector. The old garden had been refurbished. The existing plants have been reinforced by the introduction of new species from outside the farm. Today, several varieties are growing in this area thanks in particular to Jama Gedi, who is considered to be the pioneer of the practice of agro-breeding in the Dekhil region. In an interview, he recalled that since his arrival in Dekhil in 1991, he has never stopped serving his region in promoting agriculture. It is in this sense that I started working by the Guardian Youth, and you see dates from 2001, said Mr. Jama Gedi. Mr. Gedi expressed that it is thanks to his love for this land that he was able to achieve this result. As for the prefect of the Dikhil region, Adan Darar Musa has an had an interview said that the corridor uh, Djibouti Ethiopia passes at 60% uh, through Dikhil and the benefits are remarkable. Let's listen to him. The construction of the corridor has already started. It has started for 5-6 months. Corridor renovation has already started and it started 5-6 months ago with the first phase of the first part, which concerns 20 kilometers of the corridor is being finalized. There are still 100 km to 120 km, for example. At the Ali Sabih roundabout, the funds have been allocated with funding from Saudi Arabia. It now remains to the technical part. It's just going to start with the completion of phase 2300 of the 20 km. I think as planned, there will be no cuts in the work. What is the Djibouti corridor? It must be 220 km from Djibouti to 60 people crossing the region to educate 60% of the corridor. And it is also in that sense that projects have been issued and the projects that have not yet been finalized, which are from the time being started below the bus station. For example, a bus station that was to be built here, just at the entrance to the city or not far from the region, which will be built on a platform of five to six hectares that will be designed to accommodate all trackers before they are welcomed in Djibouti. This is an attempt to have national projects that will be supervised, of course, by the prefecture and the regional council in consultation. And with the initial finance law that grants more financial decentralization to the regions, the Dekhi Regional Council has started a project that will improve many sectors, especially tourism. What are these projects? Answers with Abdurrahman Yunis, President of the Dekhi Regional Council. I think that the year 2020 will be a year of change and decisive. I believe that the year 2020 will be a pivotal and decisive year. Why do I say that? Because the government, as the first president of the republic, is concerned about decentralization. And his government is concerned about decentralization because before we had no intercollector. But now we have an interconnector who acts as an interface between the central government and the regions. Any project, of course, we are preparing. We have to have it validated by the assembly of the regional council. I was already preparing a big project, the Dekhil Palm Grove. I had called it an environmental preservation project and it's also linked to ecotourism. And I saw that tourism is a lever for the development of the region. A hotel complex in the heart of this palm grove with everything that resolves around it installed next to it. A development and leisure center already rehabilitated. The old swimming pool rehabilitated. Sports grounds such as tennis courts for tourists and 
even as long as there is capacity in terms of sheet metal work. As long as he has a whole family with him, his children can have an air of deja vu and all that, of course. And focus the strategy, accelerate job creation, not only does it create jobs, it helps preserve the environment. It's also about tourism. In our South Sudan, where on Friday, South Sudan's uh, President Salva Kiir appointed rebel leader Riek Machar as vice president, paving the way for the formation of a unity government that aims to end six years of war. This is a big step forward if they do indeed form the government, as they say. But a consensus had been reached on only three of the other four, including the current first vice president, Bandeng, a former ally of Machar. This swearing-in ceremony took place today, Minister Makir said Saturday is the third deadline for the formation of the unity government which was agreed in September 2018 peace agreement but postponed because crucial issues remained outstanding. A field mission of the Peace and Security Council under the presidency of the Republic of Djibouti and chaired by Mr. Mohamed Idris Farah, ambassador of Djibouti to Ethiopia and permanent representative to the African Union took place from 18 to 12 to 20 February 2020 in Juba, southern Sudan. The objective of this solidarity mission of the Peace and Security Council was to put pressure on the South Sudanese political actors in order to meet the deadline of 20, 22nd February to form the government of national unity. This field mission took place during a crucial political period in southern Sudan, uh, which uh, allowed the two leaders, Salva Kiir and Riyak Mashar, to meet and commit themselves to form a government of national unity by 22nd in February 2020 deadline. To this end, the council met with the first vice president, Mr. Taban Denk, the main opponent, Dr. Riyak Mashar, as well as a civil society and international community. The ambassador of Djibouti, Ethiopia, was accompanied by on this field mission by Khaled Omar Said Khairi, defense attache of the NPC of Djibouti in Ethiopia, and Mr. Musa Jama Ali, council of the NPC of Djibouti. Now, coming back to the national news, the Secretary of State for Youth and Sports, Hassan Mohamed Kamil, accompanied by the Minister of Employment in charge of Administrative Reform, Ismail Ibrahim Robley, and former Secretary of State Badul Hassan Badul, was warmly welcomed by the authorities of the region early Friday morning before the start of the march uh, dedicated to the safeguarding of a fragile ecosystem. Secretary of State Kamil, alongside several officials, many representatives of the Diplomatic Corps, accredited in Djibouti, as well as several international development agencies, went to Rasbir in honor of the lighthouse bearing his name and classified as a national heritage site. By visiting this modern secure, secular site, Hassan Mohammed Kamil wanted to emphasize the particular interest of this lighthouse for the thousands of ships that pass through the Strait of Babel Mandeb every year, ensuring the turfer of world trade, a function which in all logic will have conferred on it, according to him, the status of world heritage of the UNESCO for a long time. On Friday, the Raspir Godoria March, uh, organized by Addo Association, shone brightly with the participation of several hundred young and old many officials and battalion of the international organizations, diplomatic corps, and multilateral development aid donors. And after the march, officials, guests, and all participants in the march proceeded to a site cleanup session in tree planting. The objective was to raise awareness and understanding of the issues related to pollution and also to restore, preserve, and enhance the mangrove of Godoria. As a reminder, the Godoria mangrove is the largest existing aquatic forest in our country with an area of 240 hectares. The only a forest that is home to four species of mangroves present in Djibouti. It should be noted that in recent years, the mangrove has seen a degradation of its plant, cover about 35%. The Ministry of Urbanism, Environment and Tourism organized on Tourist Day at the People's Palace a workshop for the validation of the National Report of Legal and Political Analysis of the Implementation of the Rio Conventions in Djibouti. This validation workshop brought together in the, uh, a diversified panel of uh, participants, including representatives of sectoral departments, the armed forces, representatives of prefectures, regional councils, and civil society, including women and youth associations. 
The workshop was chaired by the Secretary General of the Environment, Mr. Dini Abdullah, with the participation of the officials from the Ministry of the Environment, including Director of the Environment, Mr. Hussein Burash, in his deputy and the project coordinator, Linda uh, Yusuf Qayyad. This document, which is of major importance for the country, provides a novel view of Djibouti's political and legal framework for environmental governance, and in particular, the Republic of Djibouti's obligation under the Rio Conventions. In addition, a memorandum of recommendation for the institutional reforms aimed at providing, improving and strengthening integration, interministerial and interdepartmental uh, coordination on monitoring and compliance with the obligations arising from the Rio Conventions has been prepared. The objective of this work is to definitely improve coordination and strengthen the country's institutional capacities in environmental management. Within the framework of the improvement of urban transport, particularly in the Balbala area, the Djibouti Road Agency started this morning rehabilitation work on the Sheikh Musa Balbala Road. The rehabilitation work will continue on the other roads in the capital. The technical teams of the ADR are already in the fields with machines to prepare the rehabilitation work of the main road Sheikh Musa from District 4 to 5 of the municipality of Balbala. The road to be rehabilitated passes through Sher Musa, 55 houses, Fukuzawa City, T3, and finally Wahtadaba. The works provide for the widening as well as uh, uh, within the framework. Uh, the road Sher Musa is very busy in both directions. Djibouti Belbela deviation have been arranged in order for users to continue traveling in both directions. Obituary, we have learned this morning the death of uh, the late Muhammad Qasim. This was born in 1949 in Djibouti. He passed away at the age of 71. The deceased was an employee of Djibouti Telecom for four years. He was also the maternal grandfather of our dear colleague and presenter of the French TV news, uh, Ferdous Hussein Ahmed. He lives behind a widow with two children and 22 grandchildren and great-grandchildren. The deceased was a good man who was loved and respected by those around him in these painful circumstances. We offer our most heartfelt condolences to the family and loved ones of the deceased. May Allah have mercy on his soul and welcome him into his eternal paradise. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'un. Moving on to the international news in Europe, the announced failure was confirmed on Friday evening that 27 heads of state annual budget at the end of a two-day summit in Brussels. The President of the European Council, Charles Michel, uh, confirmed that more than time was needed to find a compromise. A new summit would therefore have to be held in the coming weeks. Negotiations broke down because of differences between the of least uh, spending countries and group of 17 countries that refused to make budget cuts. The EU's future financial package is all the more complicated to finalize as Rubians will have to forego uh, some 10 billion pounds a year, a year as a result of the UK's exit from the EU. And that's all for this news. Thank you for joining us on the radio television of Djibouti and have a good night.